Today we're gonna do a really awesome upgrade on the L5P Duramax that we have here. One thing that I'm very concerned about is my transmission in this truck right here. I wanna make sure that I continue to keep the longevity up. The fact that I decided to install the Pulsar tuner as well as the up pipes from PPE, the downpipe, as well as all the HSP goodies that we have underneath the hood. The truck is pretty peppy. At the end of the day, it's just a truck that I drive every day, but I wanna maintain longevity. But given that the truck is not deleted, it's all emissions intact, I gotta say guys, I am thoroughly impressed with everything that I've done to the truck and how it performs. As a matter of fact, after I installed the tuner, I've learned after driving it for so long that my miles per gallon has definitely increased in town. Now it hasn't excelled on the highway. It's been kind of averaging between 22 to 24 miles per gallon. Just regular town and city driving. It actually increased quite a bit, so I'm very impressed with it. Now some of the issues that I've had after I installed the tuner, I'm learning that in tune four and five, the EGTs are definitely spiking up there between eight and 900 degrees while I'm just normally driving. There are certain times where we'll do that. Just giving you guys my overall experiences and my thoughts on the product so far, and I actually really like it. As a matter of fact, I'm very interested to see what the Banks Derringer has in store for the L5P as well. But the bottom line is, is that I have to control myself. I have to somewhat make this truck truck master proof, if you will. But after I posted that video where I took this truck on a little joy ride and got on it, Ryan from Ryan's Diesel Service reached out to me and he was like, Josh, you might want to consider installing this part in your transmission because if you keep doing this, you're probably going to damage something internally in that Allison. So I definitely took consideration of that. I ordered the part, he sent it to me, and here we are guys. I'm gonna go ahead and install it right now, and I'm also going to explain to you guys the benefits of it. Now this will go from an 11 to a 2019, so your LMLs and your L5P Duramaxes. I will be showing you a tutorial on how to exactly install this part, and we may get a little crazy. I don't know guys. We'll see what happens in this video, so make sure you watch till the very end. My dash is also telling me to change my oil, so I'm gonna do that here in this video as well. Here's a couple of reaction videos of this beast right here when I launch it, so check this out. spot to launch although this truck does have up pipes down pipe all that all that high flow stuff too so it does help a little it's bit it's got all the goodies yeah Holy God. <laughs> <laughs> oh well that's definitely a difference right there oh my goodness i you told just, you man <laughs> just bounced my head off the seat rest <laughs> what, the world? what the pole star would do if you didn't have those big giant wheels yeah, okay. That, well, that, that's kind of what I was trying to explain. <laughs> that's definitely a world of difference. Oh my goodness, I wasn't even ready for So enough with that. Obviously, I'm not going to do that all the time. But, you know, I do want to go ahead and get a good peace of mind once I install this part. So let me explain to you what it is and how it can save your transmission. The mainline pressure is actually created by the transmission oil pump and mainline pressure is directed by the valve body to apply pistons and create clamping force to the clutch packs. Reduce mainline pressure or not having enough mainline pressure at the right time means reduced clamping force and there won't be enough to hold the torque of the engine. So in a nutshell, when clutch packs slip, it causes excessive heat and then it'll destroy your clutch pack. So this is exactly why I'm doing this. So in conclusion, once this part is installed, it will allow all available mainline pressure up to 230 PSI to reach the applied pistons and clutch packs at all times. So now that we have all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and call Ryan at Ryan's Diesel Service. I'll leave a link in the description for this as well so you guys can check that out. And we'll go ahead and get his explanation on this and then we'll go ahead and install this bad boy and take it on a rip. I don't know. We'll see what happens in this video. So exactly what is this part and how does it benefit the transmission? Yeah, so basically our EPC fooler, what uh, ends up going is you remove one of the solenoids out and this is going to be a solid plug that's going to be a billet plug that's going to actually block in there. Basically what ends up happening in between shifts, 
um, when you're going down the road, um, the transmission will kind of alternate pressure back and forth, where what this is going to end up doing is this is going to allow the transmission to stay pretty much at max pressure all the time. And you're not going to have that worry of, oh, my pressure is dropping or rising. If I rip on it, do you think that if I didn't install this part, it would it could possibly further damage my my transmission? Absolutely, definitely could. And, uh, you know, for the guys that are out there that are tuned, whether it's the emissions intact custom tuning or it's, um, you know, a deleted truck, they do have TCM tuning that is a, is available that they, you can actually raise that in the actual TCM tuning itself. In this case, for the guys that don't have TCM tuning like yourself where you're running, you know, the Edge product or Banks product or something of that nature, um, you would end up going and, like you say, putting this on as an alternative um, due to the fact that they don't alter that right now um, as far as with, you know, any TCM tuning. So that's why, like you say, this is a really good product for that. Some guys will say to, you know, worry about, you know, the transmission temp running hotter, that sort of thing, um, because we actually can run these in the LML and in the L5P trucks uh, up to 2019. Um, um, so in that those aspects, we've tested them with the temperature-wise towing, you know, back-to-back -back racing, pulls, that sort of thing. We've had really good success and really good luck as far as that goes with not, you know, having overheating issues and that sort of thing. So is this part something that you guys make in-house with your CNC machine? Yeah, yep, yep. We manufacture them. They are on our website. Um, they're a pretty cost-effective part. They're about 50 bucks um, for it. And uh, like I say, it's about uh, roughly about an hour time to do an install and that sort of thing. Now that's not bad. So basically anybody can do this with the right tools and such. Yep, yep. Basic hand tools and uh, you'd be good to go. Absolutely, yeah. We're glad we could help you. All right. Well, thanks, Ryan. You have a good day. Yep, you too. Thank you. All right. Okay, so now that we're back, I'm gonna go ahead and install this stuff right now. I'm really curious to see how all this plugs in. Again, I've never done this before, so I'm really excited to do this and protect my investment. Thank God Ryan sent me some really detailed instructions. You guys know how this works. Usually when you buy something, they give you these black and white instructions and you have no idea what to do, but he highlighted it pretty well. So, very pumped about this. I shouldn't have any problems, shouldn't hopefully. But we're gonna go ahead and do this right now. I'm gonna drain my trans fluid. Now I will not be replacing the trans fluid only because it's already been previously serviced and the trans fluid is still good. Oh, I'm so pumped to install this high capacity PPE oil filter. As a matter of fact, I sell these on my website, truckmasterdiesel.com, so definitely check that out. It has built-in torque stop technology, which basically means that with these higher capacity, larger oil filters, you don't have to tighten them so tight. You can actually just put them on like a regular oil filter because in the past, a lot of these bigger ones right here, if you don't put these on super tight, they're gonna explode on you and oil's gonna go everywhere. And you'll be driving, you'll have no idea, and then your engine will blow. So I'm gonna do this simultaneously just because I already have it up on the hoist and we need to service this truck. And I'm taking it on a long trip here in the next couple days. Literally after the service, I'm gonna be hitting the road and doing the long haul back down to Indiana. And we're gonna go ahead and Hang out with Dylan, Dirty Diamond Diesel. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing some really cool videos with the Dumpster Cummins. I'm sure you guys haven't seen that truck in a while. A lot of people asking me what is going on with that truck. Well, I'm going to fill you guys in. We got some pretty cool stuff going on. Okay, so now that I have the engine oil drained, I went ahead and put the plug in. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our nice clean Home Depot bucket, brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the drain plug right now, and you got a ton of these 13 millimeter bolts all around this trans pan. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now traditionally, I'm usually gonna go ahead and just powder coat a nice PPE pan, but unfortunately, this is for another build that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and order another one once I do this again. Also, this engine oil pan is for an L5P 2017 to 19. So I'm going to be installing this as well, but not in this video. I'm going to be doing a separate video on my other YouTube channel. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. It's Truck Master Garage. Make sure you guys check that out. But if you guys are interested in upgrading your truck, definitely check out the website. 
I'll leave that link in the description below. I have all this stuff on there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this plug back on. It's gonna catch right here on the bottom, but this job can get pretty messy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it right down on this bucket here. Who knows, maybe one of these days, Kodiak trucks can rebuild the strands if we do any cool horsepower upgrades. But this will be our very first one, I'm excited. So now that we can clearly see the valve body, you have these little solenoids right here. You got one and two. Right above that, you're gonna have this little wiring harness connected to this other solenoid. There's a little clip right here on the very end of it. This little plastic nub right there. But you're gonna go ahead and depress on that using a like a little pick or something. And this is what I use. I just went ahead and pushed on the very end of it. For example, like right here, if I was to pull this solenoid off. And then go ahead and just pull this down. So that's how I did it. So just get that clip out, move it out of the way. But here's the gist on this one, it's really simple. Just remove the eight millimeter bolt, go ahead and pop out this solenoid, and then we'll go ahead and install the new part. And then after that, we'll just simply reinstall the eight millimeter bolt to the bracket, and then clip this wiring harness right back in. I'm just using something rather short to get back there. It's kind of difficult. Here's the solenoid. It's kind of suctioned in there. Okay, so per instructions, all you're gonna go ahead and do is take this unit, and just simply go ahead and just plug it right in like that. Make sure it's seated correctly so it doesn't come off, but it's held in pretty good with that O-ring. All you gotta do guys is just reinstall it. So just one little mental note here, there is gonna be a really small machined hole, pinhole in the solenoid extension and you don't have to worry about the orientation when you reinstall this part right here. It won't affect anything. And simply all you gotta do is just plug this thing in, install the bracket on this lip, and then put that eight millimeter bolt right into the valve body and you're good to go. Let me show you what it looks like. For some of you guys that actually installed this thing and you're concerned that this part right here will pop out because it's now not bracketed, to the actual machine part. For some of you guys that are watching this for reference, you guys can see that this bracket is installed. Let's go ahead and get this internal filter plug back in and I'll go ahead and put this trans pan back on. And for some of you guys wondering, I tighten these down to 20 foot pounds. Some guys do 15, but that's where I like it. Okay guys, you know what? Scratch all of this. I went ahead and pulled the pan, started thinking about it a little bit more. And man, I, so basically when I put the internal filter back on, which by the way, you don't have to remove it when you do this job. I just felt like it might be in the way when I was messing with the valve body back there. But I went ahead and plugged in the new filter. I dropped it. I just wanted a peace of mind, but then I started thinking about it. This is for a deep transmission oil pan anyways. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and just install my PPE transmission oil pan now and uh, not powder coat it, you know? I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be fancy because let's be honest here, this thing is my tow pig. It's not a show truck. Well, who knows what will happen in the future. If I decide I wanna do it later, I'll do it later. Maybe I should wait on powder coat, but then again, it's raw, it's fine. No one's gonna see it anyways, right? All right, so enough with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just install this right now. I mean, might as well, I have it, right? Oh, by the way, I changed my mind again. I'm gonna go ahead and put some fresh fluid in there. I'm not gonna film me putting the oil and stuff in the engine. You guys get all that. Instead of the traditional 10 quarts of engine oil that we have to put in there when we do an engine oil change on a Duramax, with that high capacity oil filter, it's actually gonna add up to 11 quarts because it's such a larger filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the truck, put that in off camera. And then of course, we're gonna replace the transmission fluid as well. And we should be good to go. Okay, so now that we're on the road, I've been actually driving for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it home, pull the dipstick while the vehicle's running, and then of course I'm gonna add to, according to the dipstick. So I'm gonna go ahead and top it off when I get home. But guys, overall, I'm really pumped about this, that I have a peace of mind knowing that this new truck that I have, 
won't have any issues, especially after it's been tuned and whatnot. And if I decide to play with it, I don't have to really worry too much. The truck really isn't putting out much power. I'd imagine I'm probably sitting a little over 500 horsepower, but we'll see once I dyno it here in the near future. I need to be careful, guys. I get too crazy with these builds sometimes. You know, I like to throw go fast parts at it, but at the same time, this is my daily driver. I use it to pull things, so you know, I gotta be careful with it. Racing and having fun and pulling sleds and stuff like that, let's be honest, I have other trucks that can do that. But overall, the install went really well. I mean, it took me like 20 minutes to install that part on the solenoid, it was too easy. But I'm so glad that I did it. And huge shout out to the team, again, at Ryan's Diesel Service. I'm actually really glad that I installed that PPE oil pan and put fresh fluid in there. But hey guys, that's it for this video today. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys enjoy truck content, truck builds, you own a truck, something like that, or you just wanna follow my journey. Also check me out on Instagram, it's at truck underscore master 07. And again, if you guys want to check out some of the cool merch that we have on the website to support the channel, definitely do that. But I appreciate your time as always. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.